All right, lesson 4-2, operations on functions. Again, what I'm going to do in this video is a review of topics that you've already learned and used. So you are responsible for knowing how to complete all of these operations on functions. Okay, sum, difference, product, and quotient. Two notations you can see. All right, if these are operations on functions, they're on multiple function rules. Okay. Sum and difference, our domains are not affected, neither is the product of functions. But notice when we get to the quotient, we need the condition that g of x cannot equal zero because if that function is equal to zero, then we know that that doesn't exist. Okay, so when I'm solving this, f of zero is three, g of zero is negative nine, so adding those function values together, negative 6 would be my answer. f of 5 is 8, g of 5 is 16, 8 minus 16 would give me negative 8, f of 4 is 7, g of 4, 16 minus 9 is also 7, so when I multiply those function values together, 49, f of 2 is 5, g of 2 is 4 minus 9, negative 5, so when I divide those, my final answer would be negative 1, g of negative 2 is negative 5, f of negative 2 is 1, so subtracting 1 from negative 5, my final answer would be negative 6. g of negative 1 is negative 8. f of negative 1 is 2. So their resulting quotient would be negative 4. Okay, everybody should have been able to do those without me having to go through it all. But just as a simple reminder, we plug them into the functions individually and then perform whatever the operation is. All right, so now in terms of x, if I want my function f of x and I'm going to add that to my function g of x, then I'm just adding their rules. Combining like terms, I have a resulting quadratic. f minus g, the biggest mistake you'll make here, you're subtracting the entire function. So I would suggest writing parentheses, and then when you distribute that negative, it changes that minus 9 to a plus 9. Combining like terms, negative x squared plus x plus 12. That would be our resulting difference. f times g, x plus 3 times x squared minus 9. So doing some multiplying, x cubed minus 9x plus 3x squared minus 27. So just rearranging that polynomial to be in standard form. Recall standard form is my exponents decreasing in order. f divided by g all over x squared minus 9. You are responsible if any function can be factored in order to simplify the problem further. You are expected to do that. Denominator is a difference of perfect squares. So the resulting quotient is 1 over x minus 3 g minus f, so x squared minus 9, minus that entire linear function, using my parentheses again, x squared minus 9, minus x minus 3, I get x squared minus, oops, oops, sorry about that, I get x squared minus x minus 12, And just to point out, this answer here, g minus f, is the exact opposite of f minus g. So if I factor a negative 1 out of this, I would get x squared minus x minus 12. So that's not coincidental. We just changed the order in which we were subtracted, so their answers are exact opposites of each other. All right, now g over f. So x squared minus 9 divided by x plus 3. 
This becomes x plus 3, x minus 3, all divided by x plus 3. So these cancel, and my resulting quotient would be x minus 3. Okay, let me talk about 4 and 6 specifically. The quotient are the ones that have the domain restrictions. Domain restrictions always come from the original expression. So when I look at that f of x divided by g of x, my domain restriction is that x squared minus 9 cannot equal 0. So solving that for x, x cannot equal plus or minus 3. Now we got the negative 3, the x plus 3 factor, to cancel, but that doesn't mean that the domain restriction goes away. So this is my answer with the restriction that x cannot be plus or minus 3. You always have to think about going back to the original problem, okay? So that's why we have to keep in mind what the domains are. Now when I look at number 6, my only domain restriction there's now just a linear function in the denominator, so now x can't equal negative 3. So it's simplified to what looks like a linear function, but we have to make sure we keep in there the domain restriction that x can't equal negative 3. All right, last one that I'm going to do. Now our composition of functions. So recall composition is when you compose two or more functions together. Our rule, we work from the inside out. Okay, so when I look at number one, this is saying f of g of zero. So my innermost function is g of zero. So g of zero would give me negative nine. And I take that answer and I plug it into my outermost function. So f of negative nine, would give me negative 9 plus 3. So negative 6 would be my final answer for that one. All right, number 2, f of g of 5. Innermost function is g of 5. That gives me 16. f of 16, when I plug that into my function defined by f, my final answer would be 19. Okay, I'm going to have you guys do numbers 3 and 4 so I can talk about 5 and 6. Okay, so notice in numbers 1 through 4, my input were numbers, so my output were numbers. Now when I look at 5 and 6, my inputs are still in terms of x, so my outputs are going to be in terms of x. So the function I'm defining is g, I'm plugging that into the function I'm defining is f. So f tells me to take x and add 3 to it. So according to the composition, um, whatever's inside the parentheses here, I'm replacing with g of x. So g of x is x squared minus 9. And now when I combine those like terms, I'm left with x squared minus 6. So that would be our final answer. Now in number 6, my order changes. So now I'm taking f and I'm plugging f into the function we define as g. So g is defined as x squared minus 9. Clean those up for you. So what am I replacing that x with? I'm now replacing x with that function f of x f of x is the linear function x plus 3. Okay, you do have to simplify that. So expanding that binomial, square the first term, double the product of the two terms, square the last term. So that gives me x plus 3 squared. And then when I subtract 9 from that, my final answer would be x squared plus 6x. All right, if you're a bit confused on where this came from, remember that when I square any quantity, I take the base and I multiply it by itself. So you can FOIL that out and you can verify that that's what you're going to get as your answer. Okay, that's it for the video. Uh, homework may follow, um, but we'll be sure to let you know of that.